Wish you both well. Senator Lee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks to both of you for being here. Ms. Berner, I'd like to start with you, if that's okay. In March of 2020, would have been just before the uh, COVID pandemic uh, changed all sorts of things that year. You spoke at, um, at Rutgers at an event on economic justice. As part of your speech, you criticized the Republicans on this committee, uh, comparing us to union busters. Now, you stated as, following, and, uh, as follows, and I quote, Despite the fact that multiple women credibly accused Kavanaugh of having sexually assaulted them, Senate Republicans allowed only one woman to come forward to testify. They ignored or belittled the other accusers. The fact that Dr. Ford was the only, was only one person, allowed uh, Republicans to pretend the situation was he said, she said. And these techniques were taken directly from the playbook of anti-union employers during union organizing campaigns. Now, I assume that you would have thought it would be more fair to the parties to have a panel of, of, of any person inclined to throw accusations at then judge, now Justice Kavanaugh. Is that correct? Is that what you were saying? Senator, good morning. Thank you for your question. When I made that speech, I was speaking at Rutgers University in my capacity as general counsel of the Service Employees International Union. Right, but it was you speaking, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. So is, in response to my question, is, is that what you're saying? It would have been more fair uh, to just put anybody up there willing to throw accusations at them? Senator, I believe it falls to the members of this committee to decide and determine how judicial confirmation hearings take place. What I can tell you is that I believe Justice Kavanaugh, as every other justice of, of the Supreme Court, was legitimately confirmed. And were I to be so fortunate as to be confirmed, I would follow his opinions and the opinions of every justice. Okay. I, I do take issue with your suggestion that we ignored or belittled anyone. I sit on this committee. I sat on this committee then. We went to great lengths to make sure that, uh, that we heard accusations. Now, would you consider a person's involvement in a system of covered up sexual harassment something that should be disclosed in a nominations hearing? Senator, the um, system for disclosure is quite uh, lengthy. I know my colleague and I um, participated in lengthy reviews of our records and background uh, investigations and I trust the members of this committee to determine the appropriate process for review of nominees. Now, your actions dealing with an SEIU sexual harassment scandal were outlined in an expose published by the Payday Report, a pro-labor website in 2019. Whether or not you believe numerous women who accused the SEIU executives of sexual harassment, do you think it would have been important for you to disclose to this committee your involvement in that scandal? Senator, I was general counsel. I was counsel to the Service Employees International Union um, at the time of the events that you are referencing. And um, as a lawyer for my client, I zealously advocated for my client in those matters as in every other matter. Sure. Now, one of the women uh, who was uh, alleging to have been the victim of misconduct, uh, misconduct, sexual misconduct, by some, several of the men in leadership roles, in roles of significant authority within SEIU, including uh, her SEIE UHW division director, who wrote a letter uh, to which she responded. Now, in that letter, she begged you to come to a sworn deposition where she would be testifying. She would be providing sworn testimony about the alleged assaults against her by SEIU directors and executives so that you could reach your own conclusion as to whether there were problems within the union. Now, you responded, declining to attend or even investigate the matter, writing as follows, quote, because each local SEIU employs its own staff and sets its own personnel policies and protocols, the international union does not have a direct role in investigating allegations or concerns that may arise in local unions regarding personnel matters. You also encouraged her to uh, continue engaging with local staff. Primarily, uh, what that meant was continuing to engage 
with uh, the person she was accusing, with the guy she had accused of victimizing her. So why didn't you disclose your involvement in this issue, including and especially that part? I mean, that's not a realistic option, is it? To tell the victim, go talk to the person who's messing with you, who's harassing you, who's breaking the law. You didn't disclose that to the committee, did you? Senator, I faithfully complied with all of the requests asked of me um, and required of me of disclosures. In my 25 years of practice of law, I have handled hundreds of matters, and uh, I have done so zealously, as has been my professional obligation as an advocate. And I understand that sitting before you today, uh, I am seeking a position as a neutral, and I would take the transition to that new position seriously and faithfully, and any position that I had taken in the past on behalf of a client would not influence any decision that I would make were I so fortunate as to be confirmed. Dave Regan, who's still the president of that union, and still a vice president, um, he, um, he was one of the men most often accused, and he was allowed to use the union members' dues to defend himself. You think that was an appropriate use of the members' dues? Senator, I am not counsel to the local union that you are referring to, and I'm not familiar with the facts that you referenced. I see my time's expired. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Lee. Senator Booker. 